Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today we need to have a little bit of a look at temporal forces. There is a lot that we need to be having a chat about regarding temporal forces. We can now finally do a complete pre-order guide because we know everything there is to know about the pre-order. We still don't have the full confirmed set list. That will come at the weekend when pre-releases begin. What we do have, however, we've got ourselves everything we need to know about the products, and that is wonderful. Now, in terms of temporal forces as a set, there's reasons to be excited about this. There are a few reasons. Now, firstly, this is a set that is bringing back Paradox Pokemon. And we've got wonderful illustration rares, like, for instance, the Iron Crown and the Iron Boulder that are absolutely stunning. Or we could look at the Raging Bolt and Gouging Fire. They are absolutely amazing. The Ancient Ones are done by T-Zero, and I think they are absolutely amazing. But there are also going to be a whole bunch of playable cards. Anuma Rhydon, along with Iron Crown, is projected to be a very, very good deck, judging from what we've seen over in Japan. We've got really good single prize ancient Pokemon like Koridon and Roaring Moon. You'll have to forgive me, I have to use a Japanese version of Roaring Moon, because we've not seen a European language version of that one. I apologize. But it is a set which is shaping up to be looking very, very nice. And it is absolutely having a big impact in Japan. Not only that, there is a great Tusk Mill deck. One that I did not take seriously because, I mean, come on. But it turns out it's legit. There is like a legit great Tusk Mill deck that is, I'm going to go there, great and I am loving this. Oh, I should probably also mention the new Chinchino, which does 70 damage for each special energy attached to it. And seemed like a joke, but is actually like properly legit in Lugia decks. And by legit in Lugia decks, I mean it won the 3,000 player Fukuoka Champions League. So, yeah. Like actually properly legit. And of course, we see the return of a specs like Reboot Pod that I showed you the other day. Yay! That's the one which is specifically for future decks, accelerates a bunch of energy. It's amazing. And then obviously, we got Prime Catcher, which is the best of them, but not necessarily for every deck. It is a set about which you should be getting very excited. But what can you actually go and pick up? Well, starting this weekend, you can go to pre-releases. This weekend and next weekend, that is the weekend of Saturday the 9th and Saturday the 16th, that is when pre-releases for Temporal Forces are finally, finally kicking off. And I am delighted. And the good news is we now finally do know what those pre-release promos are, and that is lovely. The two best are very much Maridon and Coridon. I showed you this the other day. And we've got the Maridon that accelerates energy while doing damage, which is ridiculously good. And the Coridon that does 30 damage for each of your ancient Pokemon in play for two energy, which is ridiculously good. They are by far the two best there. We've also got the Metang, which accelerates metal energy and is pretty good. If you find a good partner, it will be awesome. And then we got the Feraligator that can legit do like 280 for 2 energy, but it's a stage 2. And I know over the past several years I've talked about a card being good and then had to add, but it's a stage 2 way too often. But unfortunately, um, yeah, that, 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 that's where we are. Sorry about that. And that will incidentally be available after pre-releases. They are building battle boxes. They are sold in various retailers. But that's all that's going to be available for the next couple of weeks on the weekend at your pre-releases. Remember that until this set, we have had build and battle stadiums. There was one for Paradox Rift, for instance. But build and battle stadiums don't exist anymore. Those products have been stopped. They've been discontinued. There is no build and battle stadium for temporal forces. You have been warned. But then we get to the 22nd of March, that is two weeks on Friday, and then we get to the proper job, full-on release of the set, and it is going to get exciting. Now, obviously, you've got your usual stuff here, you've got your booster boxes, which can be picked up, which are lovely, 
and you've got your booster packs. There are four different designs. We got two Ancient, that being Raging Bolt and Walking Wake, and two Future being Iron Crown and Iron Leaves. So choose as appropriate. But then you've got the other products. Now, in terms of Elite Trader Boxes, we have four. So we got the regular ones, which are, there's an Ancient and a Future, themed around Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. And then we've got the Pokemon Center exclusive ones, which are largely the same. But if we put the Iron Leaves next to each other here, you can see that it is the usual deal. The Pokemon Center exclusive is $10 more, and you get yourself two extra booster packs, and one extra promo. So as well as getting the regular promo, you also get the Pokemon Center stamped promo. Now these are the promos that are available. We've got Iron Thorns and Fluttermane, and they are the illustration rares, which are not available in the set. We've seen this many times before. When a promo is taken out to be used in something like an Elite Trainer Box, it is removed from the set, and can only at that point be found in the Elite Trainer Box. They're cool. I'm going to be picking them up. Why wouldn't I? They're amazing. Now, if we just look at the regular Elite Trainer Boxes side by side here, we can see that we've got the usual deal. You get ourselves a bunch of packs, 9 or 11, depending on whether it's Pokemon Center exclusive or regular. You've got your basic energy that nobody really cares about at this point. But then you've got your book and your dividers and your dice and your condition markers, etc., they are very, these have changed quite a bit set to set. Now we know exactly what we're getting. Honestly, you look at the design of the dice and the sleeves. That's it. That's what you've got. The condition markers are the same as they've been for a long time. So have a look. See which of these looks good. Make up your mind. Now in terms of the free pack blisters, we've got two of these. And they actually both feature a brand new exclusive never before seen Pokemon. These are not alternate arts. They are brand new cards. Now, the Cleffer is adorable, but it's a 30 HP Pokemon that for zero energy searches your deck for two basic energy and puts them into your hand. The vast majority of the time, you're given up a prize to search your deck for two basic energy. And if that's good enough, wonderful. But, you know, you have been warned. Then we've got the Cyclazar, which is better as a card. Single energy, flip a coin till you get tails, draw a card for each heads. I love that it's a single colorless energy on a basic, but I also understand that a lot of the time it's um just going to get you no cards, or one. And then free energy, 120, and it can't attack next turn. If you're hitting a decent weakness, maybe, but it's colorless, so you're not. I'm sorry. Now, in terms of the one-pack blisters, I like these. There is a brand new exclusive, never-before-seen Bellabolt. And there is a reprint of Carvana, a previously released one. But, oh my word, look at the artwork. Now, if we take Carvana for a moment here, this has been confusing me. And I'm going to tell you again, because this is confusing me. It is a alternate art reprint of the one from Obsidian Flames. With very different artwork. That's fine. I like it when the reprint has very different artwork. But it perfectly matches the Sharpedo, which it should, because it's by Tonji Matsuno, the same artist. How were they not a pair in Obsidian Flames and the other one was the promo? That's so weird to me, but I love this artwork. I'm going to forgive it, and I'm going to buy this one-pack blister. As for the Bellabolt... You can't actually see the card through the coin, but I can tell you it's got single lightning energy, flip a coin if heads paralysis, not good on a stage one, it does no damage. And then two lightning, one colorless, 10 damage, and you may discard up to two lightning from this Pokemon, and it does 80 more for each card discarded in this way. So maximum of 170 if you get free energy on and discard two. It's fine, it's not great. Now in terms of the one pack blisters, we've also got the check lane blisters, Featuring Batscalibur and Togekiss. These are not new cards. They are reprints. You get the full evolution line and you get a single pack. And my thoughts on these remain the same as always. If they've got a different holo pattern to normal, that makes them unique and you should pick these up. They're cool. Outside of that, the Batscalibur one's actually a really nice evolution line. Super playable. So maybe buy it for that. But that really is about it. There are better products to buy. And then we've got the Booster Bundle, or should I say Booster Bundles, 
There are two different configurations. Now, both of them are just six packs for the price of six packs. For special sets where you cannot buy a booster box, these are amazing. This is not a special set, and you absolutely can buy a booster box, which makes it significantly less amazing. But it's still pretty gosh darn cool. And you get six packs. I, like, I bought a couple of these in the past. I like them. They're not brilliant value or anything like that, unless you buy them selling off. Just nice to get six packs, I'll be honest with you. But the difference here is we've got the regular version, same size basically as a build and battle box. In fact, I've got two next to me here. I can confirm they are exactly the same size. And the other one is basically wider. Look at it on the inside. You can see it's like a regular booster pack, but they put a massive board around it. This is so that in larger shops, it takes up a bit more shelf space, catches the eye of customers a little bit better. That's it. There you go. And there you go. That's what you need to know. That is Temporal Forces. It's coming out. Pre-release to start this weekend. Full release is on the 22nd of March. And frankly, I am very excited. This is a set I am hyped for. And it does become legal on the first day of EUIC. Which is also the day that we rotate. And oh my word, I am hyped. But now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me how excited you are. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Got us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. Oh, and get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Dingus, not to be confused with Dingus Flingus. They joined at the same time, it's a little bit confusing to me, but they supported me on Patreon, and I love them for it. So shout out to them for the support. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.